The lunch bell sounds, and I bring myself out of the stupor as I slipped into the dirt <laughs> into during the morning class. A lack of sleep last night, coupled with increased pace in the morning run, has left me a little exhausted. Despite that, I find myself skipping stairs on to the roof. There's a thrill of excitement now, in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. Truth, both and Emmy and Ren are still my friends, but Emmy has become more than that now. Ren is in her usual spot on the roof, almost as if she'd never been absent. Feeling better, I take it? I raised eyebrows, my reward for speaking. Better than what? Er, well, than you felt yesterday. Ren gives me a question, some serious thought. I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for some of the yesterday. Yesterday. It's a all fuzzy. Too much cold medicine? Well, I will sleep, and that usually is pretty good. But I can't remember what it feels like to be asleep, because I'm not conscious for it. <coughs> it's a real problem. I can't give her a voice. I can't put a voice through it. I don't know why. Then again, if I knew how good it felt, it might not sleep anymore. Well, this way I keep trying, so I guess that's how I can keep from being overtired. Internal mystery to keep me sleeping at night. Maybe. Mystery is the wrong word. Intangible divinity might be the proper way to describe it. I see. No, I don't see at all. But no idea what she's talking about, but that's okay since I really do. Do you remember what sleeping feels like? <laughs> like yesterday? Do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, I actually didn't get a lot of sleep of yesterday. Hmm. Maybe that's because you remember it subconsciously. Actually, I think Hell's worrying about Emmy. Doesn't Emmy worry enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gives me pause. True, but would she ask for help if she needs it? Rune frowns and I raise an eyebrow. Will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is there something she w should be asking for help with? Her leg? Her starters? It seems to catch Rin's interest. Leg. It's hurt, but she won't see the nurse about it. Rin shakes her head in disapproval. You have to make it. Like she makes me go to class for her own good. Otherwise, she would lose her leg again, and that's just too weird. Losing things twice. Especially if you don't find them again to begin with. Unless prosthetics are the same as finding something. That's kind of lost, isn't it? I think so. Mm, I wonder. Wonder what? Emmy seems to have stuck up on Rin and I. Though Rin doesn't seem especially surprised, which it is itself unsurprising, I suppose. Rin manages to sit herself upright quite expertly, throwing her upper body forward and using her momentum to right herself. Your leg, how does it feel? That earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. Not worth worrying about. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. And he pouts like I've just told her she's been grounded. He worries too much. It's not a big deal, it's just a little soreness. I tried to resist rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then you should have no problem seeing him, right? <laughs> I mean, narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he, did he put you up to this? Well, maybe a little, but that's not the point. I would have reminded you to see him anyway. It would be terrible to see you really hurt and not doing anything about it. That would make it worse, and I don't really want to see you hurt, you know. Call me crazy, but I kind of would prefer to see you happy and healthy. With each statement, Emmy frowns fades a little more until eventually she's grinning, albeit a little shyly. Well, if you're gonna put it that way, then I guess I'll have to see him. Otherwise, you'll keep worrying, and then I'll get number to the end of it, right? That's right. I'll keep bugging you about it, and that might put a damper on your, our dates. How's the food, Sal? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. <laughs> How's your day, Sal? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. Sal, I think I'm ready to go all the, uh, 
talk to the nurse. <laughs> See, it doesn't work that well. And the giggles at the high pitched rendition of her own voice. Oh god, <laughs> she was doing a voice of her. I should have picked up on that. Gives me a detection name joke. My voice isn't that high, Jerk. I should, I tried to make it as high as possible. I thought it was pretty accurate. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I mean, I stared in for a while when I burst out laughing. <laughs> I mean, crosses her arms and huffs and walks and ended. It will, Jerks. What are such vile calumnies from you, young woman? I'm stunned that you would call me, of all people, a jerk. Honestly, I just... I don't know what to think. And he sticks her tongue at me. You ass. So Ren, how's your art club these days? And see if I'm really as surprised by this and change of topics as I am. <coughs> Takes a minute to think before answering. I believe it's okay. Although Namaya keeps telling me to work harder. But I don't think he understands my methods. He has always struck me as slightly creepy. Ren ponders the same for a while. I've never noticed. But I don't pay much attention to him most days, so maybe that's why. How often do you mean? Thinking of joining the cell? What? Nah. I've already decided to join the club. Really? Which one? Well, it's not much it's not really much of a club to be honest. Oh, you join the tea club? No, I joined the science club, I think. I mean, looks highly confused. You have a science club? Uh, not really. It's just me. The Sal, that's not a club that's sitting in your room reading books. No, I mean, it's just me and Matau. I'm just the only student so far. Matau, really? The thought strikes her. Oh, is that what you're talking about yesterday? You're meeting with Matau. Ah, oh, that was our first meeting, I guess. Let me giggles. Nerd. Hey, I can't help being clever. You know I could have just used your help years ago. You should have had your heart attack earlier in life as hell. I laughed and then I realized that this is probably one of the very rare times I laughed about my heart attack. Hindsight. Yeah. Ringing of the bell ends our conversation. Hmm. Guess we better go. Yes, so. I think Rin is sleeping. Come on, Rin, you too. Rin is apparently going to begin to doze off, so he um, gives a sharp pump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to go to class. I disagree, but maybe if I didn't have in class, I'll get, this, get it this time. Changing locations is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Neither Emmy and I both uh, bother asking what it is. As we arrive in the classroom, Emmy gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway, written in tow. I turned in the classroom when I met with the duo Shizun and Misha. Misha seems to be fighting a losing battle to keep from breaking into a fit of giggles while she translates to the latest round. While we are pleased and they thrilled to see how well you've managed to make new friends and forge real relationships. And what's that touch of cutie too, Chad? I think that the last part was probably Misha. We nevertheless feel compelled to politely remind you that the public displays of affection are strictly forbidden, really. Really. That's disappointing, Shichan, by Selection 8, the code to conduct laid out in the student handbook. In that case, however, ignorance of my law may be my excuse, be your excuse, as we are feeling lenient. And the paper will require to punish the both of you will only add to the already mountain mountainous volume of work which confronts us and the sole members of the student council. And besides, you two are adorable together. No. Therefore, considering this a formal warning, and please refrain from such a place in future. At least when should Chad can see you a chat. This whole spiel is so patiently ridiculous that I can't help but reply in the same pompous manner. Well, I for one feel mightn't. I apologize profusely for my rash actions, and will strive to contain my baser impulses, which I fear impelled to me towards such an inappropriate display of public affection. It is hardly my wish to burden an already overworked student council with such petty matters, and will do my best to make their lives easier in the matter in the future. At least, when 
Mrs. Yoon's not watching. Or when Mrs. Yoon's watching. The last line is delivered with a wink to Misha, who promptly loses control over laughter. Wah ha ha! Well said, Chad. Chucking Lee. Chuckling a little myself, we entered the classroom. Class is uneventful, and after the final bell rings, I find myself alone with Matao again. So it looks like we've assembled for the second meeting of the science club. Or is it the first? What do you think? We should count yesterday as a meeting? Well, we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? <coughs> that seems like club business, so you can safely call yesterday a meeting. Manal smiles in his usual stilted and awkward way. I wonder if the muscles in his face are just not shaped correctly to not let him smile naturally. You really do have an act for this, I think. Logical thought process, that is. I guess so? A scientist speaks with authority, so the answer is yes, I do. When the word world wants to know how it works, well, we tell him, tell it. Even if it even if all we got is the decent hypothesis. But we must sound certain anyway. Because with the authorities on the subject, right? He chuckles to go along with his awkward smile and his awkward joke. I'm doing my best not to grimace, but I don't think I'm being too successful. successful. That's entirely false, of course. We know a lot, sure, but nobody's an expert on how the world works. If only because nobody can be sure, with no certainty, there are no experts. But we will like to pretend sometimes. <laughs> There's some things we can be certain of, right? Yes, but no. We know gravity's there, for example, to illustrate. When Tao picks up a pencil and drops it. See? Still here. But it's good to check every once in a while. <laughs> That's why you'll still here see researchers mucking out, out with gravity. We're pretty sure how we know how it works, but there's always a chance that sometimes isn't how we find it, how we think it is. So you check and check and check. And science in a nutshell is how. The whole time I've listened to the feeling rather spellbound. But how seems to be rather passionate about this stuff, I think. It's hard to tell sometimes. How the world works. How humans work. How the universe works. All these questions to be answered. And depending on what I go into, maybe I could even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think that's really a priority for me. Besides, as we start discussing the bucky of yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that than my heart condition. Before we even realize it's an hour gone by, well, let's call this meeting over for now, okay? We'll have another meeting tomorrow, uh, the day after. He considers this for a moment. Call it the day after. I've got a lot of grading to do. Okay, see you then. Bye. As I exit the classroom, I realize that I don't really have anything to do tonight. I mean, I didn't make plans, so. I guess I'll go to the library. It beats doing homework in my room anyway. The library always seems cooler than the rest of the building. Probably to keep the books from getting damaged by excessive heat and the humidity. Books and sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are so well worn that pages are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible for them to still be usable, but you handle them with care. I make my way to the main desk where I spot you go busying yourself with some time, something or another. She smiles at me and I enter and waves. Hello, Sal. Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Nothing in particular, I guess. I just didn't really feel like going back to my room is all. You go not. Well, if you're not occupied, maybe you could help me look for something. Sure, wait, do you need? You brings your finger tool up, looking around furtively. She seems to be looking for 
eavesdroppers. Come, come closer. I take a few hesitant steps forward while feeling distinctively unnerved. The eagle lowers her voice to come in and chill whisper. I'm on the trial of the Yamaku cat burglar. Well, you can actually see her freckles. The what? Shh. The walls at ears is out. Or they might. But listen, those missing books, remember them? I heard yeah. Well, they are they weren't missing. They were stolen. I'm convinced of it. I remember you saying something of that sort earlier, but how do you know? Eagle leans in closer and if possible whispers even lower. Because I found one of them <laughs> one of his hiding places. He did what? Eagle is triumphant. Found one of his dashes. It was one under the stairwells in the boys' dorm. Three books I've been looking for, all there. I suspect that he hit before, but this proves it. So do you take back the books? Nico looks as if I've suggested she walk around naked. Are you nuts? He can't know if I'm onto him. He might go around the ground evade, <laughs> evade capture. Uh, huh. So what do you need my help with then? You catch another glance around the library and leads him closer. You've got to spy for me. A spy? Yeah, like when you're at the dorms, you know? Keep me an eye out for the suspicious activity. What can what constitutes suspicious anyway? I mean, Kenji is this pretty suspicious dude. But I'll wager he barely goes to class such less neat in the library and folk for books. Still. What's the harm in saying this? At least it'll get me out of this weird conversation. Yeah, I can do that, no problem. He even trains up and claps excitedly. Great. Now, hurry up and talk about something else. <laughs> in case someone comes in. How is school treating you? Er, uh, pretty well, actually. I've been running in the mornings with... <coughs> I mean, if it was right? Uh, yeah. How do you know? I served you two in the tea house, remember? I deduced that you were going to run with anyone, it'd probably be her. She looked pleased with herself. Impressive. Anyway, yes. We've been running in the mornings, and uh, we kind of started dating. You could clap your hands together excitedly. Really? That's great. I bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that, you know? I even thought to myself when you walked into Shanghai that one time, I wonder if that kid will wind up with one of those girls. Really? Miku doesn't seem to notice my somewhat weirded out tone and nods affirmatively. Yep, I could tell that you'd wind up with one of them, you know. I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Of course. Her expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. Oh, it's true. I met this guy once. I got along really well, but it turned out he was younger than me. And that was kind of weird, but not terribly so. It was really weird that he disappeared one day, and I've not seen him since then. Huh. That does seem kind of odd. Doesn't it? I hope that it wasn't something I did. I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm sure it wasn't. What? I intend to try and calm her down for the both both of us jump in surprised at the rain something coming from my pocket. You guys eyes to set yourself as I pull the phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for inert causing this incident. Emmy, what's up? Oh thank god. I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this was an <laughs> if this number would work or whether you would pick up or and I can't Oh there, Emmy, slow down. What's wrong? There's a pause on the other side of the line. <coughs> During which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Something's got her terribly agitated, but it's starting to agitate me. Can you just... Can you stop by? Like, now? Or shortly after now? I really, really need to talk to you. There's a tone of pleading in the last sentence, and I don't think I've ever heard from her. Of course, I'll be right there. I hope Teddy, okay? In my increasingly agitated state, I apparently need to start saying things that don't quite make sense. Okay, I'll be okay. See you soon. 
pressed the button at the end of the call before slipping the phone back in my pocket, apologized to Yuko for running off, and then ran off. Perhaps at some point I would have stopped to think about the time or how suspicious it looks for a guy to end the girl's drum at this hour. Except right now I'm just concerned with getting into Emmy finding out what's wrong with it and how I can help her. I knock the owner and greet with the subdued come in. Something is very wrong as I stare at the scene before me. Oops. Emmy's there. Yes. But she's in a wheelchair. And her legs are missing. I can watch around the room and see them sitting in a corner looking like they've been thrown there. Emmy responds to my entrance in a lopsided grin that is both pleased to see me and completely utterly heartbroken. Hi, Sal. I won't say she's been crying, but if she was, she'd stop now. I noticed that I'm a little out of breath, having taken the stairs to it at a time in order to get here. My heart doesn't seem to mind the strain, though. I thought the happy fact away for later consideration. Like, when I'm in a staring, somewhat dumbstruck, I'm a girlfriend in a wheelchair. Realizing I've not responded to it, reading, my brain lurches into gear. Emmy. What happened? Yes, I should have listened to you as hell. My legs got a nasty infection. I'm not allowed to run for at least a couple of weeks. She gives a bitter laugh that shouldn't be coming from her. Heh. <laughs> I can't even walk on it. I could have used a crush, crutch kept one of my legs, but I didn't see the point. Why hop? You can't run on one leg. At least this way. I can still, I don't know. Roll fast or something. It, yeah, that's good, right? My awkward attempt to look on the right side seems appreciated, but not really effective. Emmy shrugs again. It's just kind of a nuisance. I mean, we can't even eat up on the roof now. No wheelchair access. Yeah, but that's not a big deal, right? I mean, we can still eat together, and that's not that's the important thing. The lopsided grin again. It hurts to look at. I suppose so, yeah. But like I said, it's a nuisance. I mean, I haven't really used a wheelchair in... She thinks for a moment. Maybe seven years, something like that, anyway. A long time. I'm afraid I'm a bit out of practice. Well, fortunately, it's only temporary, right? I mean, not. Oh yeah, of course. It's not like I've lost them permanently. What is some hitting ass all the time? I nod sympathetically. <laughs> There's not much else I can do after all. What am I gonna do, say? I told you so. Although I did tell her to get that leg looked at. But by the time I noticed, it was too late anyway. Do you need help with anything? Uh, the, that is, can I help you with anything? Emmy shakes her head and there's a bit of a usual... A bit of a usual grin back. Nah, I can manage. Fine by myself. Although, if you want to help me over to my bed, it would save me the trouble of rolling over there by myself. I blush in spite of myself. And he giggles. You're such a prude, Sal. I'm not a prude. I just wouldn't want to take advantage of a young woman such as yourself. It's uh, ungentlemanly. I wheel at me's chair to her bed and easily scoop her and spot deposit her there. She quickly sorts herself out and sits on the side. She's actually a little heavier than she looks. It'd be rude of me to observe this aloud, of course. Man, you're kind of heavy. <laughs> and he hits me with a pillow. Ass. The saying is all. It must be this, all that more running. As mentioned of running, Emmy grins, falter slightly. <laughs> well, I guess I won't have to worry about that for a bit, huh? Maybe I'll lose some weight. That's what you do to lose weight, right? Cease physical activity? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what she, the nurse would recommend. Speak of which, are you going to still be showing up in the mornings? I'd hate to run a l- Ah, oh, shit. I mean, some interjection, more disquieted, muttering that anything to shoot broken and causing me to look over in shock. <coughs> she's leaning forward trying to cover the fact she's crying by covering her eyes with a hand. Of course, the subdued sobbing makes it pretty obvious that she's crying. Hey, I'm sorry. Forget I said anything, okay? 
place my hand gingerly around her and pull her close. I can think of nothing else to say or do. How do you comfort someone who's just lost their legs again? And he wraps me in a hug and stays that way for a while. Sorry. I'm pretty bad at the whole com comforting thing, I guess. Don't say that. I'm fine, really. Her voice is slightly muffled by my chest. I pat her head reassuringly. That's a spirit, right? You'll get through this fine. I know it. Besides, I'm here to help you, right? Remember? Emmy lifts her head and stares at me with tear straight eyes. Can you? Can you really? She's grinning lopsidedly, and something sparkles in her gaze. I can't tell if I'm being mocked or not. Of course, I mean, I'm sure. You're a bit heavy, but. Mm. <laughs> My witty confidence is cut off by the center press of Emmy's lips on mine. I'm cut off guard and rewarded by hitting my head on the wall behind her bed. Ow. Abby pulls back, trying to look concerned rather than like she's about to laugh. Are you okay? Sorry. I rub my head ruefully and grin back at her. Caught me off guard there. Is that going to be become a habit? Am I going to be lectured by Shizuna and Misha more? As I mentioned of the duo, Emmy Eagles. Honestly, those two. If I didn't know it, why, I'd be utterly confused why she's hanging around with someone to be so bossy. Which one are we talking about? He know exactly which one is Sal. He's just hardly bossy. So what's the reason then? Huh? The reason why Misha hangs out with she's doing? And he waves my question off with a smile. No idea. I see. Anyway, you seem to be forgetting the original question, don't you? Oh yeah, I guess I am. You wouldn't mind giving me a guy a little warning, would you? Otherwise, I'm liable to wind up in a concussion. With a concussion. I emphasize the point by rubbing the at the back of my head. Then he giggles madly. You could wear a helmet. Some kids here do, you know. <laughs> or I could just take revenge. I'd grab a pillow from beside me and whack at me over the head. Then he topples off the bed and lands on the floor with some. Her arms strongly reappear on the bed and she manages to pull herself back up. She really has a surprising amount of strength in that little body. Her face turned downward and away from mine, making me think I might have accidentally hurt her. Emmy, you okay? You didn't hurt you. A hand shoots up and grabs her collar. She pulls me in with a sharp tug, her face now barely an inch away from mine, and she grins cheekily. Emmy? What? She gives you a sharp headbutt, our foreheads making quite a loud thud. I sit back and run my now it's overhead as Emmy smirks face notoriously. How's that for revenge? No fair. You can't take revenge for revenge. There's someone missing most of her leg most of her legs. Emmy's surprisingly agile. I swipe at her, but she definitely rolls out of the way and lands a hit with her pillow. Of course the odds are against her. I can I can stand up for starters. Oof. Oh god. Whoa! Ooh, whoa, whoa, like, um, um, I guess I can't. After all, Emmy seems to have effectively tripped me up and is now sitting primarily astride me I, as I lay on my back. <coughs> I'm not even sure how she managed it. I win. Her eyes twinkle mischievously. I've been thoroughly defeated and by a girl that's a fraction of my size at that. But again, being defeated someone doesn't seem quite so bad. And me being positioned over my waist isn't something that I or my body could ignore easily. I look at my lips to see, but I mean heads dart downward before I could get so much as a word out. I get no resistance as you press your mouth to mine, not that I want to. This is different somehow. She pulls back, nips out my lower lip, reinitiates to embrace. Her tongue darts inside my mouth, exploring. I can feel a world spreading through my body as my heart begins to beat faster. My mind starts to go foggy, and I become vaguely aware of my hand traveling up Emmy's blouse. Emmy gasps as I reach a breast, and then there's a giggle, and then I stare at that grinning at Emmy. Told you, that makes my second win now. What? <laughs> Doesn't count. You use feminine out. But you're, you use feminine wiles. Um, I'm a little scared. 
good. <laughs> I'll spare Mother Gore, right? Ha! You're even blushing. I didn't know you were blushing, Sal. You're blushing too, you know. Probably because you of your prudish ways. Even I've got to admit, this is a stupid thing to say to a woman who is currently straddling me and has been, up until a few seconds ago, playing tonsil hockey with me. A prude, am I? Well then, let's see who blushes first, shall we? I'm not sure whether the tone of her voice terrifies me or arouses me. But that question is quickly made rather moot. Whoa, look at that. Oh god. They did the deed. Oh god. Oh god. What? Oh god. Oh god. Uh, so, did I blush? Oh my god. I didn't notice. The hell is this even adult content removed? Did I? I mean, Shrug's still breathing a little heavily. Didn't notice either. Maybe we should. Oh. <laughs> I need to use a window. My first intent is to hide, but then I realize I'm still utterly exhausted. I'm still sitting next to topside Emmy, so there's no running away. Anyway, Rin's eyes pass over Emmy and me and focus on the window. There was a cloud. A cloud? And it nods. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck is this? I was watching it from my window. But I didn't say it in mine. No. So I need to use your window. And me shifts a little, causing me to cough in order to cover a giggle of my own. How long do you need the window for? We're, uh, busy. This time, I can <laughs> contain my laughter. <laughs> Rain ignores both Emmy and me and peers out the window. Her shoulders slump and looks disappointed. Hmm. It changes into something else. Disappointing. Emmy's having trouble keeping a straight face. Sorry to hear that, Rin. Could we have a little privacy now, please? What the fuck? What the fuck? Rin shrugs as if to say, can you? And hugs her foot around the door, pulling it close behind me. We both dissolve in a righteous laughter, unable to deal with Rin's bizarrely timed visit any other way. After her laughter dies down, I look to Emmy, we're both a total mess. Well, Emmy raises an eyebrow. Well, again? <laughs> Emmy grins and laughs as it, and she nods. Which probably be its close this time. Oh, oh god.